It's time for the 2015 Tiki and Tierney NFL Training Camp Two-A-Days as we visit all 32 NFL camps to preview the upcoming season. Arizona Cardinals, 11-5, second in the NFC West. Palmer takes, fakes the run, throws back wide to the left, caught by Brown to the 10, cuts right to the 5, Brown to the end zone, he's in, touchdown! Welcome to the NFL, John Brown gives the Cardinals the lead in the fourth. The Cardinals cruised early in the 2014 season, starting with a 9-1 record before losing quarterback Carson Palmer to injury, derailing the season as they finished 2-5, and five, including a first-round playoff loss. We have to make game plans to win games and ask players to do things we think they're capable of doing to win games. So I never buy into injuries, losing games. Palmer is back, as is the franchise's best all-time player, Larry Fitzgerald, to join a loaded defense and a healthy, talented offense. Bruce Arians continues to impress on the sidelines after winning his second NFL Coach of the Year award. But can a healthy Cardinals squad challenge the two-time defending NFC champion Seahawks for division supremacy? Joined now by the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, head man Bruce Arians with us here on CBS Sports Radio, Tiki and Tierney. Coach, how are you feeling today? Feeling great, man. Do a little work and, and get ready for the Raiders. You know, Coach, I always say you're the coolest guy in the room wherever wherever you are. We had you out at the Super Bowl. You felt that same way. Coming off of a last season, though, I, and I, I wonder what their motion is, right? Because you were so close. Uh, your defense played really well, especially when it came to scoring. Offensively, you just lost it with Carson Palmer. What, what's the emotion for you coming into this season after last year? Yeah, you know, that that was a season that at the end you could what if yourself to death. And uh, right after the season, I looked at all those names that were, that were in the IR and I put them back on a depth chart and said, damn, this is going to be a pretty good team. And uh, I got anxious probably the first time in a long time. I got real anxious to start a season right away. Uh, we've had a really good camp. Uh, already had some of those freaky injuries that everybody else is having. But uh, it's just part of the business right now. But I really like where our team's at mentally. You know, the most important one of those is is the quarterback, which I mentioned before. How's Carson Palmer looked? Does he look healthy? Does he look confident? Is he ready to lead you guys where you think you need to take? Oh, I think he's all of the above. I mean, he has he's in great shape. He's worked so hard on his on his body. I mean, I, he's thrown the ball so much more with more velocity and down the field. I think it's because. He works so hard on his core and his legs. You know, you don't really strengthen your arm, but if you strengthen your core and your legs, just like hitting a golf ball, you're going to hit it further. Oh, is that all it takes? <laughs> yeah. Get a squat rack in our studio, will you, Bob? Maybe I'll start you. hitting some in the, in the fairway, actually, as Bruce Arians with us here on CBS Sports Radio. Uh, Chris Johnson, you recently picked him up. I know that uh, Sean Weatherspoon's still going through the hammy as well, coming off the Achilles last year. Try to judge where some veterans are, uh, and but also get ready for the season. And I mean, there's a little bit of guesswork involved, I would imagine. That's a tricky part of the summer, no, Coach? Oh, there's no doubt about it. You know, we just... Spoon at least got all through OTA, so he got a lot of teaching. Um, we saw him there without pads, but you know you got to see a guy back in pads, and and he's missed all of it. We thought we had him back, and he re-injured the hamstring, so we're taking our time. You know, Chris came in, he looked really good, and he's running the flat route the last play of practice, and he was just pulled up in the flat and pulled a, pulled a hamstring. So it's crazy anymore with this stuff, and. Uh, yeah, it is. Jermaine Gresham's the same way. He got a groin after having a couple of good weeks. You get a veteran in here, and you got to find out what they have, and how fast they can learn. What, how soon they can help you on and on Sundays. Coach, obviously, certain injuries just simply aren't preventable. Tiki uses the term "bad cells" on occasion when guys always pull the same thing. It, it is what it is. But in the case of like a Jordy Nelson or a Kelvin Benjamin going down at practice. You know, it, is there a solution that satisfies the need to get ready for the seeds but also preserves the bodies of, of, of men making a lot of money who are paramount to the success of your team? Yeah, I think the two that you mentioned could happen at any point in time because they're non-contact injuries. You know, they're just like us. Uh, Corey Peters would just run into the ball and towards Achilles in his other leg. Um, those things are just kind of freaky things. You can blame fate, whatever it is. There's no contact, 
Jordy could have been pitching and catching. No one touched him. He caught a hitch route and probably put the same move he's put a thousand times on. And and his ACL goes like Carson last year. He wasn't hit. Uh, he just shuffled up in the pocket and and there it goes. So I don't know. I don't I don't think the preseason games have a damn thing to do with it. There are some injuries that occur because, but you still have to have them. I've always said if you have a rookie quarterback, you want four. If you got a ten year vet, you want two. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a good way to put it. Do you, you know, an interesting is thing is though, there is a call for don't play more, as many preseason games. I think it has more to do with the offseason program and how, I, I guess, wimpified it is the best way to put it. You don't hit, you don't put pads on, you, you're limited in the time that guys can have on the field, so they come into camp less in shape, but their bodies are still as big uh, and and muscular and strong as they've all as they've ever been. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that the training. Uh, it's more track training when you're going with these speed coaches than football training. And when you play football, you're leaning, you're pushing, you're changing directions. That doesn't happen unless you're out on a football field. And with the CBA the way it is, we can't get these guys in good football shape. Talking to Bruce Arians, head coach of the Cards, Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Yeah, Bruce, you lose your defensive coordinator, Todd Bowles. He heads up to the New York Jets BT squad. Yep. Uh, and you have a new guy in, James Betcher. What's it been like transitioning to a new staff uh, on the defensive side of the ball for you? That's a pretty easy transition because Betch has been here. He's been in the system, knows why we do what we do, uh, was part of the group. you know. So, And, he, and he's always been in front of the players. He, he had halftime adjustments for Todd so they're used to hearing him and um, it was a very easy transition I did not want our defensive players to come back in off the season they had to have to learn new terminology and uh, so it, it's been an easy transition one of the things we do in practice is we actually move the ball and call plays against each other instead of having scripts and it's really for, for coaches calling plays practice as much as players you know, you mentioned Betch and, and how it's been a pretty seamless transition. It hasn't been as seamless, although I think Todd is, is certainly smart enough to to rise above this. But anytime your starting quarterback gets decked by a teammate and gets his face broken in 9,000 pieces, that's an interesting start. I mean, you've been around the game a long time. Could you envision just that scene unfolding in a locker room that you were a part of where the starting quarterback got by, got decked by a teammate like that? No, that's a, that's a very unusual situation. So, uh you know, I don't know any of the facts, uh, but I know this. Todd Bowles is the man to handle it. What's his best characteristic? Yeah, uh, he's 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 very very bright. Uh, he's extremely knowledgeable with the players on how to handle players. He builds relationships real quick, and um, and he builds trust. And he's tougher. Than yeah, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Bruce that, Arians, head coach of the uh, Cardinals, CBS Sports Radio. You know, Bruce, you won the uh, NFL Coach of the Year for the second time uh, last year, and it's it, I can't be more proud of you. And, and there's been a bunch of articles that get written because of that and the success that you had and the unconventional way that you became a head coach. And it takes me back to the your Virginia Tech days when, and as we talked about off air before this, before we started doing this interview, I reconnected with my father uh, for the first time in a long, long, long time, and you were chosen then uh, to be uh, the first interracial roommates at Virginia Tech. What, what is it about you that just makes that or those these tough moments in life uh, gravitate to you and you excel in them? Uh, you know, that's that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I grew up uh, in a multiracial neighborhood, played on multiracial teams, mostly uh, African-American teams when I was little and uh, always had best friends, you know, Go back to Chucky Kennard. God bless him. He's passed away now. Who's in my wedding, and then left and came to Tech, and and, and your pop was my roommate, and it was Salt and Pepper Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who got more dates? Let's, let's keep it real here, Bruce. Who got who got more women? <laughs> well, I, I was married after nine months. I was there, so <laughs> nah. I got that, you. that answers your question for you. You know, but you know one thing that I also read in one of these articles is, is that your relationship with head with uh, quarterbacks has been pretty exceptional, and you've made some some great ones. Is that all about a relationship? Is that a lesson for other coaches in the in the NFL? I don't think there's any doubt that you have to have a very, very strong relationship with your quarterback. The trust factor on what they're telling you and what you're telling them has to be at the utmost at highest level uh, in order to compete on Sunday because there's a lot of shit that happens out there on Sunday that it takes a very good, strong bond between two people 
to get it fixed sometimes. Bruce Arians with us here on CBS Sports Radio. Now, Bruce, one of the stories that has been uh, uh, written, and we'll see if it's actually accurate, has been the demise of the 49ers. They've lost a lot of players. You know what's happened. Are they still in the mix, or is this a three-team race? No, they're, st- they're always be in the mix. I mean, there's still a lot of quality, quality players there. Uh, they did a decent job in free agency. The cap's getting better. I mean, I, yeah, there's no the, – the Niners will be there strong. Or were, were you – maybe close isn't the right word. What was your relationship with, with Jim Harbaugh like? I'm curious. On game day and just league functions, is he a, was he a tough guy to get to know? He seems like it. Uh, Jimmy is. I've, I've known him since uh, we released him as as the quarterback of the Colts when we drafted Peyton. Oh, so he loves you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually made the phone call. So, oh, wow. so we, we always Uh-oh. we always laughed about it, you know, pregame. But he was always he was a, he's a great coach, and he and he's got his own personality. What about the Rams? Are the Rams finally ready to rise up? They have a different quarterback. We've been saying they've been coming for a couple of years now. Fisher's team. They have great lines of scrimmage, and, and I've always been a fan of Nick Foles. So, yeah, I think I think they're, this could be their year. Last couple before we let you go here, Coach. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, how much is left in the tank? And, and Andre Ellington, who is young and he's exciting and explosive, what can we expect from your couple of skill position players? Well, Fitz looks great. You know, he he's had a couple of leg injuries. He had a net two MCLs last year that really slowed him down. But he's, he's a warrior, so he always wants to play. And uh, he's knock on wood. He's very healthy. He had a great practice yesterday. He caught about 15 balls. And um, Andre is healthy. And when Andre is healthy, he can take it to the house at any point in time. And uh, David Johnson, the young kid, is finally on the field. And he's very exciting now. He had a game under his belt. Looked very good. So I really like where our speed factor on offense is as high as it's ever been. Now, speaking of high expectations, high once again in the desert, Bruce Arians doing a bang-up job with the cards. Always generous with his time. We appreciate it. Coach, I know you and Tiki go back a long way, so you guys say goodbye. Do you think? Appreciate you, Coach, right. and good luck. We'll talk soon. All right, my man. Give Mama a hug. I certainly will.